before October, and I just kind of started earlier. And um, I'm going to give you some, some scriptures. I got more scriptures probably than, than normal, so I really want you to um, just, if nothing else, put the this, put this, um, scriptures down, run them down. You can, you can use them um, going forward. Um, how we can, we've been talking about strongholds, how to overcome them, what they are, and all this stuff. So I want to talk about standing firm. Um, over Jenna was, was hitting it right there. I thought, well, boy, this was, this, this was good because um, the enemy is always tempting us. And he tempted us, uh, constantly continued to, 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 to um, come against us with it. Uh, Romans 6, 16. And in Romans 6, 16, says, you don't know what, you do not know to whom you present yourself slaves to obey. You are that one slaves whom you obey. Whether it's sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. So do you not know that to whom you bring yourself slaves to. So we have to be careful because that's what, that's one of the entrapments of the enemy is and a stronghold is, is to hold you captive and holding captive is, is slavery. I don't know if you ever seen it that way, but, but sin will hold you captive. It'll hold you like a, like a slave. And so that's a very important scripture whenever we're talking about um, deliverance and talking about walking in our deliverance, which is, which is again, I believe what there was, the song was about what we were, we were talking about. Um, deliverance is never a quick fix it's always a beginning um, people was getting delivered just 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 now because you, you give it to God and he'll take it and we, we, if, if you give it to him um, he's always there to take it and so um, once we once we have it then we need to realize that's not a quick fix each day we'll need to walk the new walk that we have and you got your new walk, obviously. I'm not talking about a new walk of salvation, which you have. But you have the new walk of now walking in the deliverance. Um, the, the, the Israelites came out of Egypt pretty quick, but it took a while to get Egypt out of them. Amen. And that was us. You got saved pretty quick. You caught upon the name of the Lord. and You confessed your mouth and believed with your heart, and God saved you. But how many know that was a lot of funky chicken and it had to come out of you <laughs> okay I think we're that's enough said about that so each day the, the key here is each day you'll need to walk the new walk each day you'll need to choose whom you're going to serve well, I'm a Christian. I'm on my way to heaven. Well, that's, that's how we get into the mess that we think that, you know, the, the most important, it is the most important, but you haven't said an important prayer since you said that prayer. And that gets us in trouble. So I'm looking at it a little bit today. Joshua 24 and 15, choose yourself this day. Whom you are going to serve? Choose for yourself this day. Every day we're going to, we're going to serve. Hey, if the devil's going to, tempt Jesus as Jenna just said how many knows he's definitely going to tempt you so he, he's the great tempter that's, that's what he is he, the word devil I bring it up a lot of times in, this, in a teaching devil literally, literally means in the, in the Greek it literally means penetrator and that's what he does he penetrates he just looks for that little crack and, uh, and a penetrator he's always you can't give him an inch because he'll, he'll take a foot and he'll just keep on he'll just keep on going so uh, Matthew 6 24 clearly says that we cannot serve two masters no one can serve two masters for either he will hate one or love the others so you can't serve what is what it is that you're attached to and serve the Lord and we, we try and that's why we're constantly in a battle that's why Christians is constantly battling and this this whole teaching has been surrounded around Christians battling strongholds because that's what that's what we are and that's what it is and that's what we have to deal with and so we, we cannot serve two masters if we submit to God and resist the devil he will flee from us because what James 4 and 7 says submit ourselves to God resist the devil don't go back to the first part submit yourself to God and then re resist the devil resist the devil persistence Resistance means pers persistent, persistently. Resi How do you do that? Right, we, we go through a whole other teaching, but just say no. Just say no. You just have to constantly, and most of the time you got to remind yourself no. There's no doubt that the enemy will continue to try again, but we must stand firm on our deliverance. Again, the, 
We, we just know in the story that Genesis brought up about he, he came back three different times. He just kept coming back. He, and, then, and then when he left him, the Bible says when he left him, he, he left him, but he didn't leave him for good. How many knows what he said when he left him? What does the Bible say that he did when he left him? He waited for a what? Another opportune time. And that's what the enemy does. He'll, oh, we just, boy, we just, the anointing was in the house, the burns were removed, yoke was destroyed, and the, and the enemy fled. But when he leaves, he, he waits for another opportune time. And so we had to continue to resist the devil. Consistent persistence. Consistent persistence. Consistence, per, that's what the word resist means. Um, so there's no doubt he'll continue. We must stand firm on deliverance and not be, to make sure we're not subject again to the yoke of bondage. And that's what it is. It's, 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 it's a yoke. Um, so anyway, so here, here's, here's, here's the teaching I pulled out today. I want, everyone should arm yourself. So if I said all that, those are good scriptures, but we got to arm ourselves. So the first scripture I want to use is Ephesians 6. So finally, my brethren, why, we read this, so why, why did Paul say it? So let's just read it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Where wiles there is tricks. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. So therefore, we're to take up the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand in the evil day and have it done all to stand stand therefore having girded your waist for truth put on the breastplate of righteousness having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all taking on the shield of faith with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and put on the heaven of salvation which is the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplications for all saints hair on my arm standing up just reading that that's what it's about and sometimes we need to we need to know when you're in a battle you're in a struggle you're in temptation you're in and, and, and strongholds I told you strongholds are uh, is, is addiction strongholds is, is anxiety strongholds is fear and strong I mean we just we, this, the scope of it which is there you, we, we have to know these scriptures I got to, I got to put on the whole armor of God so we have to make sure that's, that's based on what I taught of put, putting on our spiritual armor. Make sure our spiritual armor is on, and, and that, that tells us what it is. Number two is renewing our mind through God's Word. So how are we, how are we standing firm in our deliverance? You come to church, you get, you get set free, but I want to stay free. <laughs> I don't want to just stay free. I want to be freer than I've ever been. Amen? Yes, yes. Well, we're going somewhere. So Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'm not teaching this. I'm just reading your scripture tonight for the most part. Renewing our minds. Whenever you, get, whenever you go through something, you got to renew your mind. you gotta, you got to tell your mind what your spirit already knows. We are, I need to land here for a second. We need to realize that we are, we are tripart being spirit, soul, and body. Man is a spirit, possesses a soul, lives in a body. Okay, we, we know that. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Why do we have to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with our heart that God raised him from the dead, Romans 10 and 9? Because with the, with the with, with with the heart the mouth with the heart the mouth speaks. Why is that important? Because your heart already knows it. So as soon as you get saved, it's the first step of warfare that you learn. Your spirit man is connected to the spirit of God. That's the God part of you. In a second, instantaneously, your dead spirit to the things of God comes alive by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit of God. Your spirit man is alive now to the things of God, which it was dead. Dead means separated from God. But your mind is saying, huh? <laughs> All right, come on. And our spirit gets it. 
Our minds don't understand it. And so we confess it with our mouth, what we believe in our heart. So in essence, you're telling your mind what your heart already, your, man, your spirit man already knows. And so the battle's not in here, the battle's up here. Remember, strongholds is the, is, is the battle of the battlefield of the mind. The enemy don't have access to this. He has access to this. So we're putting on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation. Remember, to sal- keep, keep on the helmet of salvation. Why? Make sure you're, t- you're reminding your mind that that's not who we are. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. step all over somebody's theology it's not a sin that you did it it's a sin that you don't repent from it it's the practice of sin that leads to death first john tells us that but the helmet of salvation reminds yourself that you are a new new creation not only are you you're a different person you got to act different and sometimes it's just as it's simple it's it's as simple of telling yourself yourself we don't act that way my grandfather was about 90 years old right at 90 years old when he passed away he did this over 60 years most powerful man saw stuff I mean the the man just just get into get get in the in in a in a pulpit and 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 devil's just manifesting people So you wonder why I'm a little strange. I was brought up in strange churches. Things just happen. <laughs> but they didn't disrupt the whole service. He just cast them out, keep on going. But my point, I just said that story to say this. And I asked him one day, I said, Granny, what, what do I, I took this church in 98. He passed away in 99. He came, he came one, one service. And um, but anyway, he just looked at me. He said, he said, son, 98% of this is common sense. Use it. 98 percent now out of all the things i learned everything i saw that that was it that just came back my spirit it's common sense so common sense tells you we in a battle sort of remembering all the okay ephesians 6 okay romans 12 and we were first corinthians we go through it the bottom line is just stop with the helmet of salvation on re- renewing your mind reminding yourself i am a christian that old part my spirit the conviction is coming from here you got to constantly tell tell your mind I'll go as far, let me, let me put it this way, throw some eschatology over here. You know, the end of, you know, the, the mark, the mark of the beast, about putting the mark in the forehead. I don't, see the whole, the whole teaching with that, you know, the 666, to tell how powerful this is. The 666, there ain't nobody going to be doomed for getting a tattoo on their forehead. It might look stupid, but you're not doomed. You might would be, but no, I'm talking about it's my daughter. In case you don't know who this is. Anyway, so the the point, so it's, but anyway, so, so watch this. The point of, this is using the mark of the beast. The whole point of the mark of the beast is not the mark, it's the, it's the mindset behind the mark. It's the allegiance behind the mark. Okay? So, so the whole thing, it's even when Aaron, whenever, whenever as soon as the, 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 the Aaron Aaron priesthood came on, that they placed a mantra upon their head, and when they, which was one of the very important piece of their, of their priestly garment. The priestly garment, the, the, the main thing they put on at the end, they put the mantra upon their head, the mantra, and in and, 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 Bordered, literally, and it was very tight and a pull it because right here it says, it says, Lord of Lords. Because everything they did, they understood that that was the mindset. Okay? It's, 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 it's the mindset. I understand it was a real hat, and I understand it's a real mark and all this kind of stuff, but it's the mindset. That's how... That's, that's how powerful the mind is and the enemy can get in there and just suck the life out of it and we all know it. We all just know it. So with that said, 
Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholeness, helpful to God, which is a reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. That you, everybody say me, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Set you free. Number three, submitting ourselves to God and drawing near to him. I already read it while I go kind of in James 4, 7, and 8. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 8, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. <laughs> Straight to the point, isn't it? Dr. Feelgood didn't show up that day, did it? It doesn't do a lot of good to resist, to, to resist the devil if you're not first submitting your life to God. You can't resist. If you're, all you're doing is resisting the devil, but you're not submitting to God, it's not going to do you a lot of good. People fall in love. People will, people will drive the countryside. They'll go all over the place. They'll, they'll put, invest all kind of money on how to resist the devil and not focus one bit on how to submit to God. So you got to make sure does you no good to do that because if you resist the devil and he flees from you but you're not submitting to God he'll just step us he'll just step up his attack because he can if there's an area in your life that you haven't submitted yet that's probably the area that the devil would target submit what do you mean submit to God I'm giving you this God I'm giving you this fear. I'm giving you this anxiety. I, I, I'm giving you these thoughts. I'm giving you this, this desire that I have. That's probably the area he'll target. We must learn to identify the strategy of the devil, identify them when we're under attack, and learn how to use our offensive weapons. How many knows we got offensive weapons? So let me give you a couple. Let me give you them real fast. Number one, prayer praise and verbal outward confessions of faith works every time you didn't realize your praise is a weapon it's a, it's a weapon 1 Thessalonians uh, 5.17 pray without ceasing we should have a prayerful attitude at all times prayer without what, well I can't pray all the time man I got a job <laughs> What we all do. But prayer is just simply talking to God. How many of I pray a lot without saying, Lord Jesus? <laughs> Sometimes it's just, just man, we just got to open, we just got open line. You don't always have to shut your eyes. <laughs> the Bible says, watch and pray <laughs> anyway, right? James 5, 16, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen? Amen. Give one on praise here. Psalm 148, 13, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. 1 John 4 and 4, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Praise, prayer, and verbal confession of faith. Lord, you're greater that you're within. Remember, if, if, if a strong guy was attacking enemy, it's coming from the outside, not in. You got to know these weapons. God, you're greater because you're in me than that which is coming after me. So I praise you with all my heart, Lord. I praise you, God. I, 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 I know, God, that, that your name is above every name, God. And I know there's no, there's no name that's above your name. And that at, your, at your name, every knee shall bow and every tongue can confess. Whatever you're dealing with has a name. I, it's, in, it's in my notes. I got, a, I got notes on notes. Here it is. 
this is a book that here I just go I just go through stuff. <laughs> There's bins all over the place, attic in there and everywhere else. That just stuff that I studied through the years and I, I dug through and grabbed these out just real fast. I won't gonna do this, but here's 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 a point. This is a I'll probably get to it sometimes. <clears throat> like like strongholds, strongholds of divination. That's fortune telling horoscopes psychics astrology people that has involved themselves with that you got to deal with that strongholds of antichrist Doubt, doubts that there, there's, there's a god or, or an afterlife stronghold of a perverse spirit filthy mind sexual perversion pornography prostitution homosexuality Bisexual. All these things is a stronghold of a, a perverted spirit. Stronghold of error. Stronghold of error, confusion, false doctrines. Stronghold of whoredoms, unfaithfulness, adultery, worldliness, prostitution, fornication, self centeredness, obsessed with sex, lust, chronic dissatisfactions. Strongholds. Stronghold of jealousy. Strongholds of fear, fear of rejection, fear of being alone, fear of intimidation, fear of the dark, fear of death, fear of dying, fear of not getting approved for others, fear of not being light, fear of persecution, fear of failure. I go on and on. Strongholds. Stronghold of lying, slanders, gossips, exaggerates, no longer even recognizes the truth. Strongholds. Strongholds of infirmity, physical problems constantly, problems, symptoms don't ever go away. Anyway, strongholds of death, association with occults, strongholds of practicing idolatry. Idolatry is not just worshiping a false god. How many of those worshiping yourself is idolatry? Mm. Stronghold of haughtiness, which is pride, indignation, conceit, envy. What is envy? The disgruntlement over the blessings of others. Stronghold of heaviness, feeling gloomy, low self esteem, excessive grace and sorrow, depression, hopelessness, self pity, fatigue, passion. You can't even allow yourself. That's why I told you these things come up. Don't allow them to stay. Anyway, stronghold, just emotional bondage, fear, pride, jealousy, anger, bitterness, hurt, destructive, heaviness, hatred, unforgiven, discouragement, discontent. Y'all, we deal with this stuff. Problem is, is that we've learned, anyway, I got some more, but I just wanted to r remind you that that's what we're, that's what we battle against. Christians. We deal with someone else's theology. Your spirit is saved. Your soul is being saved. No, he didn't. Yes, I did. You got positional sanctification and progressive. I'm as sure as heaven as this, I'm already there. My position has changed from death into life. Going to hell to going to hell going to heaven right Christian there's no question concerning my, my, my eternal security I'm, I'm on my way to heaven but there's some areas in my life that God's still working on me so that's progressive and he knows exactly where my weak areas are and so if we don't learn how to use these weapons in which we have then he keeps coming back. That's my whole point. So we need prayer, praise, and verbal confession in our faith all the time, reminding ourselves and the devil and reminding ourselves is reminding our mind, this is who we are. This is how we act. <laughs> Do you 
good job going to go, going to bathroom, cut on the light, look yourself right in the mirror, and have a and just have a stern talking to right with yourself. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Take it, y'all have never done that. I'm I'm sorry. Welcome to my my bathroom time sometimes. What's wrong with you, man? Huh? Get it together. Thank you. It, it works. Just call yourself by name. Why don't you like my name? Call me Sherwood. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't go there. Think that. Prayer, praise, and verbal, the word of the Lord. I mean, that's a weapon. It's what Janet has said. You ever come and by the word, right? Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is, is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even through the vision of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The joints and marrow, the bone. It doesn't just get, it, it cuts through the flesh, cuts through the vessel, cuts through the bone, and gets through the marrow. You realize your vessels do not, does not produce blood. It distributes it. Right? Distributes it. Well, where does it come from? The marrow of the bone produces it. What gets in the veins and flows through your body, spiritually speaking, that which is produced and placed in your spirit, in your soul, the Word of God penetrates the flesh penetrates the vessel goes through the bone and gets through the created part of it and that which is causing you to sin is pierced by the word which is the creator the creative word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word is God. When you get the word, it goes all the way through the mind, the spirit, and the body and goes all the way down to what's causing the problem. And we want a star because we're, we're dealing with it. We're learning to be Christians and deal with, with these strongholds. I'm just spitting out at you. So look at us. I have de depressed thoughts, but I'm still saved this week. Everybody I come in contact with, I just, just wasn't happy and was envious and was jealous, but I made it to church tonight. But then you start learning that we have weapons. And you start getting this word. And you start reading that word. You start believing that word. And it starts penetrating. That word is living. It's powerful. It's sharper. Than it, it pierces. It, 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 it divides the soul and the spirit. Or that way. And, it, and, and the joints and the marrow. It's a discerning of the thoughts and the hearts. That are, are the intent. Look. The intent intentions of the heart it deals with intentions boy you know you're progressing good when you're not having to ask God for forgiveness all the time for the same reactions to every stronghold and now you realize God I don't have to thank you for 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 for, for or ask you for forgiveness for doing it I thank you God for removing the intentions of it 
We making some progress now. Thoughts I used to think, I don't think anymore. Things I used to, holes I used to fall into, I don't fall into more anymore. Why? Because I know how to pray. I know how to praise. I know how to verbally confess my faith. I know how to use the word of God. Sitting right here in your lap. more than that number three Holy Spirit oh I love this one Romans 8 26 and 28 likewise the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses when we do not know what we should pray for as we are but the spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered now he who searches the heart knows the mind of the spirit because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Yes. How do we know? Because the Holy Spirit. Well, I was going to say a while ago that I got, all, got sidetracked. There's, boy, when you're battling in the mind, and the Bible says in Ephesians 6, praying in the, just praying in the Spirit. There's something about praying in the Spirit. We didn't establish the fact that our spirit can be one place and our mind another. I can pray. Praying in the spirit literally means this. You're not praying at the level of one's mind. You're praying at the level of one's spirit. Out of your belly. What's he talking about? He's not talking about your stomach. Out of, your be- out of the center. Out of the spirit of the man flows rivers of living life given source which is what? water nothing wrong with praying from up here God bless my bless, God bless my children bless, my, bless this the dog, the cat, the fleas all of them God just bless them Pray in the Spirit. When we don't know, go back to 26, 8, 20, Romans 8. When we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. The Spirit. And sometimes it's in the natural and sometimes it's not. Boy, ain't got time for it. We're going to be here at 930 if I open this can. Just, just starts coming out. Paul says, I, I pray with the, the understanding and pray with not the understanding. But it's all in the Spirit. Amen? Yes. Just, just, just do it. <laughs> well, I don't understand it. So many to teach you nothing. Just do it. It's ain't time to play. <laughs> After my daughter. Yes, for my peace and my joy. Slam the door after you get done giving yourself a stern talking to. Pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray. God, teach them what I'm trying to say right now. We'll come back to it. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Let me give you a good example. You, you, you pray over your kid, but then go in there, you got a three-year-old, and you put your hand on them, see if they feel better, and your hand's hot because they're so burnt up with fever. Hey, me, there's nobody who needs to teach you how to pray in the Spirit then. You go from there to there. Oh, God! Come on, you know what I'm talking about. What happened? You click from here to here. I can stay on this. Spirit. Okay, number three. Let me give you two more. The name of Jesus. And these signs will follow as though that believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They will lay hands. 
that were, it's, it's, Matthew, it's Mark 16, 17, and 18. These signs shall follow those who believe, comma. Go back to 16. These signs shall follow those that believe in my name. He means there's power in the name of Jesus. Does that mean you have to always say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus? Well, it feels good and it sounds good. If, if that works for you, do it. But in the name of Jesus means you believe in the power of that name. And, and there, it, just, it just goes, you, it's just there. Anyway, do what you got to do. And the last one is the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him. Who's him? Satan. I know y'all have about 12 names just come across. Let's see. Harriet, Jim, Bill. <laughs> Somebody tonight before you go in there and have that stern talking to you, might, you might want to tell your husband, it's gonna, I'm going to be a minute. <laughs> tell you why, Shug, don't come in here. Cut the shower on, the bathtub water on, every faucet on the TV real loud and just deal with it. They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, and by the word of their testimonies. Thank God for the blood. With these weapons, we have the power and authority to defeat the devil every single day. With these weapons, we can be victorious. Amen. It is written. I mean, when we got saved, Jesus just didn't give us, he just didn't save us just to make it to heaven. He saved us to be an overcomer. Amen? Thank God we're on our way to heaven, but hey, we can, we can have a whole lot more fun than we're having until we get there. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the instructions of your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that we have power, Lord, over all the power of the enemy, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, through the word, God, that penetrates, God, the, the flesh, the bone, the vessels, God, like it's always down to the Bible, Lord.